name is John Turner and I've been lucky enough to be involved in the Merlin fleet for longer than I care to think about really, nearly 40 years. Uh, we're going to start off by talking about how to set up your rig and this is based on the modern rig with a 5720 luff length for the mainsail and uh, we'll begin by setting it up on the rig tension with a jib set much as this one is so it's convenient here today, it's a reasonable breeze so we've got it furled so it doesn't interfere with what we're trying to do. Um, if Dave wants to put the rig tension on a minute, yep. what we're going to do is just test to see what that is. I'm going to get a gauge. It's important while we're doing this that the uh, lower shrouds, which are these here, have no weight in them. So they won't influence the way the mast behaves at this stage. I'm going to just set this up on here now. And Dave will have to probably adjust the rig according to what I'm going to ask him. Yeah, it wants to go a little tight. We're looking for 150 kilos on this setting here. And you can see it on the rig tension. This particular gauge is showing it up here. It's just under at the moment, it's about 135. And a little bit more, Dave. That's beautiful. Okay, so we're smack on the 150, taking on the shroud a little bit above here because if you're too close, it doesn't work very effectively. With that now done, and we're going to check to make sure those are limp. We can now have a look and see if there's any pre-bend in the rig. And we can do that very easily by using the main halyard, which is here, and then we're gonna pull it back. Okay, so now by line of sight, we look up to where the spreaders are, and this is looking very good actually. In fact, we're looking for somewhere between 20 mil and 25 mil at spreader level. The next thing we're going to do is to check the mast rake with this rig tension on. So we're going to use the main halyard again. I'm just going to get, actually Dave, there's a tape in my box over there. Yeah. Uh, we're going to attach a tape to the main halyard. We're going to pull this up to the top measurement band. We know that measurement band on this particular rig to that point should measure 5720. So we'll just engage this. This is a two-handed boat, so most jobs are a lot nicer with two of us. Okay. okay. Right, now I can check to make sure that we're correct here. Right, now that, you can see here, look, at the moment that's too high. That's 5740. If you can release it so it comes down, well, they'll pull up again. Keep going. A bit more tension. Perfect. If we can see, look, it's 5720. Is that on there okay? Good. We now take the tape measure to the stern because it's the easiest reference point. And we measure to the top corner of this moulding here. And we're looking for 7 metres and 70 centimetres or seven centimeters, sorry, not seven zero. So seven zero seven zero is the magic number. And at the moment, we're very slightly too raked by five millimeters. Okay. So if you can rake forward a little bit. Yep. Again, that's why it's useful for the two of us here. Whoa, tiny, a little tiny bit, tiny bit more. Yeah, that's beautiful, right, is there. So right on the apex of that curve, at the transom, in the center, measured over the gudgeon. We've got it. Now it's a good idea to check that the tape hasn't moved. And I'm going to go back and make sure the tape's still in the same place. And we're still on 5720, so that's all to the good. You can let the hand it now, Dan. Okay. Right yeah. So this measurement point here is, is the key. It depends on the individual, but I like to measure from the top of the hook because it's easy for my eye reference. And that now is the correct position that we believe. You set the boat up in all wind strengths up to about nine knots of breeze. At nine knots of breeze, you're beginning to start to depower and the rate will change a little bit. It will change for two reasons. One is that the dynamic lift of the boat is such 
that the buoyancy now has changed in the boat and it will raise the bow very slightly which has an effect on the mast rake because that's the whole attitude of the boat as it accelerates. In uh, eight to nine knots of breeze the boats are going a lot faster than they are in five knots and that makes the biggest difference in the mast rake on the early stages of the wind range. Right, from that position I can demonstrate here in a, a crude fashion, there's quite a bit of breeze here at the moment and it's gusty in this venue. So it would be easier for me to do a practical demonstration on what would happen through the, the wind range and how we would adjust the rake. And if, Dave, if you can pick up the boom there a minute. Yep. And if I was setting this boat on starboard tack now, what we would be looking for is basically the traveller here is on the windward side of the boat. If you can just push the boom up a little bit, Dave, that's it. So in eight to nine knots of breeze, I would be sheeting this, something like that, and the boom would probably be coming a little bit further in than you're allowing it to, so it would be something like that. The next level of wind, and depending on our crew weight, would require me to use a little bit more vang, or kicker, depending on the... Uh, so I would tighten up on that a little bit because as I ease the main and as you go out, right, that now takes over from where I was pulling it down a little with the main sheet. As I ease that a little, when I start to ease more than pulling in and it's beginning to rest in that sort of area, now's the time to add a little bit of mast rake. So what I would do then is I would release the forward and start to add a bit of mast rake. So I would pull it back here, and then the mast will rake back, and I can sheet it more frequently towards the weather side. This happens throughout the whole wind range until we are ending up using the total range of rake. And as the breeze gets up, we add more and more rake, and a little more kicker and a little more cutting, the other things that we would need to keep the rig, uh, the sails tidy. Um, but the fundamentally, we're looking at this position. So should the wind have been at 20 knots and we're on the maximum rake back, I'd end up sheeting like this all the time and it would be something like that. And we still wouldn't have enough power left in the boat as the wind de decreases. What we need to do then is to ease the main sheet a little and then return the rake to a more upright position. Now I haven't gone through the whole range on that, but in essence, that's what we would do. Then the next thing is the boom would be going up and we would be in a lighter wind setting because the wind has now decreased. And that's how we use the rake throughout the whole range. It's very key that the crew and the helm are in tune with each other when they want to adjust the mast rate. So when we want to adjust the mast rate to a more vertical position than it is, up until we get to where it is now, obviously, uh, you would have to ease the jib sheet to make sure we didn't over tighten the leech. When we're adding rake because there's more breeze and we want to depower, the jib sheet will need to be tensioned because the leech will become over accentuated in its slackness and its reduction. And the same happens with the main sheet, but it becomes a more automatic process to notice. And that fundamentally tells us why we're using the mast rake or the way we use the mast rake, not necessarily quite why, but how we use the mass rate through the rate, the wind range.